Governor Christie, you just heard Donald Trump approvingly quoting Vladimir Putin about American democracy, about the American legal system, uh, attacking the criminal charges against him and the rottenness of the American political system, quote unquote. Uh, what's your reaction? My, my reaction is that he gets worse and worse by the day, Jake, and voters better start paying attention to exactly what he's saying. He has always been approving of Putin right from the beginning of his presidency. That was something that he and I had regular arguments about going all the way back to 2017. And the fact is that Vladimir Putin, as an expert on democracy, th th this is a guy who doesn't even know what democracy is and, quite frankly, has spent most of his life trying to undercut democracy all over the world. Um, and Donald Trump citing him as his expert witness that he's being persecuted and is innocent. Look. This is a guy who just believes, woe is me, woe is me, I can't believe I got caught. But let's remember something, everyone needs to know this. It's not going to be Vladimir Putin on the witness stand in Washington, D.C. this spring. It's not going to be some left-wing prosecutor making the case. Mark Meadows, his former chief of staff, has accepted immunity. I did this for seven years, Jake. The reason he's accepted immunity is because he has admitted he has committed crimes himself or he wouldn't need immunity. And he's going to testify that Donald Trump committed crimes on his watch. A founder of the Freedom Caucus, the, his former chief of staff, who he called the next James Baker. Donald Trump realizes the walls are closing in. He's becoming crazier. And now he's citing Vladimir Putin as a character witness, a guy who is a murderous thug all around the world. Um, it's, it's time to send, send Donald Trump back to Mar-a-Lago permanently. I want you to take a listen to something else that Donald Trump said about immigrants last night. They're poisoning the blood of our country. That's what they've done. They poison mental institutions and prisons all over the world, not just in South America, not just the three or four countries that we think about, but all over the world. They're coming into our country from Africa, from Asia, all over the world. They're pouring into our country. South America, Africa. Asia, immigrants, poisoning the blood of our country. The words of the leading Republican presidential candidate. Your response? He's disgusting. And what he's doing is dog whistling to Americans who feel absolutely under stress and strain from the economy and from the conflicts around the world. And he's dog whistling it to blame it on people from areas that don't look like us. And look, Jake, the other problem with this is the Republicans who are saying this is okay. Um, almost 100 members of Congress who have endorsed him. Nikki Haley, who this week said he is fit to be president. You're telling me that someone who says that uh, immigrants are poisoning the blood of this country, someone who, who, who says Vladimir Putin is a character witness, is fit to be president of the United States, was the right president at the right time? Nikki Haley should be ashamed of herself. And she's part of the problem because she's enabling him. She's enabling him by saying to people, it's OK. Let me be really clear. I'm in this race to let people know it's not OK. It's not OK for an American president to be saying these things. And she should be ashamed of herself. These members of Congress who just sit there and compliantly nod their head like a dog in the back of a, of a car just nodding away. Um, when he says all these things because all they care about is their own political future and their own primary in their own district, this is why American leadership is falling down. This is why I'm in the race to stay. Um, and we're going to take Donald Trump out by telling the truth because the truth matters. We have to acknowledge, though, that he is far and away uh, leading in the polls in Iowa, New Hampshire, uh, and across the country. And I guess I now have a question for you that's a, not an easy question. Do you think Donald Trump is doing so well among Republican voters despite rhetoric like that or because of rhetoric like that? I think despite rhetoric like that, Jake, I think they make excuses for him. I've, I've, I've interacted with voters who are supporting Donald Trump and they acknowledge to me, yeah, no, that's a terrible thing to say. Yeah, I don't like that. But, you know, he's under a lot of pressure. You know, um, he's just a straight talking guy. He says what he really feels and believes. And sometimes he goes overboard. So I think it's despite that. And I do think that when voters start to vote, particularly in New Hampshire, um, if, the, if the results in Iowa are as you say they will be, um, and he wins a decisive victory in Iowa, I think the people in New Hampshire are going to say, no, enough. 
And I think they're going to send a real message to Donald Trump on January 23rd. And they can't do it, Jake. They cannot do it by voting for Trump, Trump sycophants like Ron DeSantis, Nikki Haley, and Vivek Ramaswamy. Remember, Jake, at the first debate, all three of those people raised their hand and said even if he was a convicted felon, they would support him. I'm the only one left in this race who did not. And the fact is that that is the most important issue in this race because we can't beat Joe Biden with a convicted felon. We can't beat Joe Biden with someone who talks that way about immigrants to this country. And we can't beat Joe Biden by someone who is in bed with Vladimir Putin. Let's turn to uh, the Middle East uh, because the Biden administration uh, has made it clear that they're uh, so disapproving of how Israel is conducting its war against Hamas, not only uh, with so many Palestinian civilians killed, but also um, this uh, tragedy that happened Friday where the IDF soldiers accidentally killed three of their own hostages who were attempting to signal that they were uh, hostages. They were waving a white flag and, and uh, they were making it very clear that they were not Hamas. Uh, the Biden administration says it's so alarmed. Uh, they're now dis dispatching the Secretary of Defense, Lloyd Austin, and even the Chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, uh, Air Force General C.Q. Brown. They're headed to Israel uh, on Monday to urge Israel to start a more limited, narrow phase of the war where Hamas is is more specifically targeted. I, I know that you say Israel has the right of self-defense and that you want Israel to be able to eliminate Hamas. But beyond that, do you have any concerns about how the IDF is conducting this war? Well, you know, look, Jake, when you, when you hear that three of the hostages themselves were killed while holding up a white flag, how could you not be concerned about that? Now, look, I can't imagine in a million years that IDF soldiers would intentionally do that. I believe that they made a mistake. That's the fog of war. Mistakes are made under this type of pressure. It doesn't make them acceptable, but it makes them a real un unfortunate consequence of war. But look, the Biden administration should be having these conversations privately with Israel. Every time they do something like this so blatantly and publicly, what they do is give aid and comfort to Hamas. Joe Biden and his administration are giving aid and comfort to Hamas, and it's wrong. The fact is that it was Hamas that started this war. The fact is, I've watched that 43-minute video, as I know you have, um, the, the absolute inhumanity and joy in that inhumanity that Hamas took makes it clear this won't be the last time they will do it if they're able. So Israel's got to get focused on killing as many Hamas soldiers as they can to decrease that likelihood that Hamas could effectively pull off another October 7th. Um, so I'm, I'm concerned about particularly those hostage killings and the mistake that was made. They need to lower the temperature inside the IDF if they can in the middle of a war. But in the end, Biden and his administration are giving aid and comfort to Hamas when they say these things publicly. And I think it's wrong. Uh, lastly, before you go, I just want to get your uh, response to former Trump attorney Rudy Giuliani uh, being ordered to pay $148 million to those two uh, Georgia election workers that he helped smear. Ruby Freeman and, and Shay Moss and their defamation uh, uh, trial, um, you, you know the smears he made uh, that were completely false, uh, completely, um, really pathetic, ra rather, uh, and, uh, you know, ruined these women's lives. Uh, he's now been ordered to pay $148 million. Your response? Look, I think $148 million is a wild amount of money, and I never thought it would be that high. I thought it would be in the millions. I never thought $148 million. But look, the problem is what Rudy said when he left the courtroom, uh, that he doesn't regret one thing he said. And this is what Donald Trump does to people. Uh, you know, he turns them into people who become these kind of robot true believers um, who just will say whatever he wants them to say. But I would note something to my old friend Rudy Giuliani. It's not Donald Trump who's going to be forced to pay that $148 million and live the rest of his natural life in debt. It's Rudy Giuliani. This is what Donald Trump does. It's not Donald Trump who's in jail at the moment. It's all those people he encouraged to run up to Capitol Hill on January 6th and try to interfere with the peaceful transfer of power. Um, it's, it's not Donald Trump who went to jail for all the lying he did in his business. It's Michael Cohen, his lawyer and fixer at the time, who went to jail for that. Donald Trump is a poison on our political system, and anyone who stays close enough to him either has to run away like their clothes are on fire or they're going to wind up in much more trouble than he's ever been in. But, Jake, the clock is ticking. His time is coming. And Donald Trump, I absolutely believe, will be convicted of crimes that are worthy of jail come this spring. And he knows it. 
and that's why he's getting crazier every day.